For over two decades, Internet companies have been shielded by a law called Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. However, that legal shield is now in question. Executives from Google, Facebook and Twitter testified before a Senate committee about their moderation practices. However, that hearing soon turned into a political showdown. Here's the report. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. The U.S. Senate hearing to reform an Internet we law quickly are, turned uh, into a political scuffle. The hearing was to hold the tech companies accountable for how they moderate online content ahead of the contentious presidential election. But the lawmakers not only went after the tech executives, but also attacked each other. The Senate Judiciary Committee was split on ways to grill Internet companies Google, Facebook and Twitter, accountable under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. An act which protects these companies from liability over content posted by users, but also lets these firms shape the political discourse. The chief executives Sundar Pichai, Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg testified before a Senate committee about their company's moderation practices. The three witnesses we have before this committee today collectively pose, I believe, the single greatest threat to free speech in America and the greatest threat we have to free and fair elections. Republicans on the committee expressed concerns that Facebook and Twitter made decisions that were slanted against the conservatives. Mr. Dorsey, how does a claim by Chinese communists that the U.S. military is to blame for COVID remain up for two months without a fact check and the president's tweet about security of mail-in ballots get labeled instantly? The chief executive of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, became the primary target of the Republicans. About 80 minutes into the hearing, 16 to 25 Republican questions were to Mr. Dorsey. We realize that more accountability is needed to show our intentions and to show the outcomes. Thank you, um, Senator. So I, I hear the concerns and acknowledge them, but we want to we fix it with more transparency. That the U.S. military is to blame for COVID. Senator Ted Cruz, who was shouting most of the times, questioned Twitter's decision to block the New York Post article on Hunter Biden, complaining that Twitter was influencing the election. Mr. Dorsey, who the hell elected you? and put you in charge of what the media are allowed to report and what the American people are allowed to hear? And why do you persist in behaving as a Democratic super PAC, silencing views to the contrary of your political beliefs? The committee has compiled dozens and dozens of... Other senators criticized Mr. Dorsey for adding fact checks and warning labels to President Trump's tweets, but not on Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini. It's strange to me that you've flagged the tweets from the president, but haven't hidden the Ayatollah's tweets on Holocaust denial or calls to wipe Israel off the map. Meanwhile, the Democrats took a very different approach, prodding them about disinformation and extremism. They also accused the Republicans of holding the hearing to the benefit of President Trump. Uh, I want to note first that this hearing comes six days before Election Day, and uh, it makes... I. I believe we're politicizing and the Republican majority is politicizing uh, which should actually not be a partisan topic. After Jack Dorsey's grill session, Facebook became the target of the Democrats. Mark Zuckerberg, now a five-time veteran in appearing before the Congress, took most of the questions in stride and appeared well briefed. After experiencing a technical glitch at the start of the hearing, Zuckerberg noted that Facebook is spending billions of dollars on election security. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was able to hear the other the other opening statements. Um, I, I was just having a hard time connecting my, myself. At Facebook, we publish our standards and issue quarterly reports on the content that we take down. Uh, we launched an independent oversight board that can overturn our decisions, and we've committed to an audit of our content reports. The winner of the hearing was Google CEO Sundar Pichai. He barely spoke and fielded just 22 of 129 questions asked. Let me be clear. We approach our work without political bias, full stop. To do otherwise would be contrary to both our business interests and our mission. The lack of questions and scrutiny mirrored how Google's YouTube has often avoided much of the harshest criticism directed at social media networks. 
In conclusion, the hearing about Section 230 focused little on Section 230. U.S. Election Desk, we on World is One.